Hello everyone, welcome back to the Ponderosa. Take a look at this real quick. We're talking solar still on my current uh, topic of discussion in my videos. Solar panels like these and many others have connectors that you've seen here and these are called MC4 connectors. Most every solar panel these days comes with MC4 connectors. It is a standard de facto connector for solar, right? And uh, these are both made by New Power. I picked up on Amazon. And I have some by JA Solar that I picked up on Facebook Marketplace. Now, I picked up a couple of BP Solar 36 volt panels last week. And uh, from a distributor also uh, on Facebook Marketplace, it's in Orlando. And they don't have the same MC4 connectors. So in this video, I'm going to show you what I have for crimping on MC4 connectors. And as you can see on this BP solar panel, I cut those off and I installed my own MC4 connectors. MC4s are very standard and common on solar panels. So I would want everything to be the same so I could use various junction boxes and you know power splitters and combiners to bridge panels together. Originally I thought, well, I'm going to cut you know these off and use butt splices or I'll put Anderson power poles like ham radio guys do, but that, that's silly because MC4s are you know very widely popular, widely available. They're very easy to crimp on. So as you can see, I've done it to this, okay? And I'm going to continue doing it to this panel and the other one I have that does not have the standard MC4 connectors. MC4s are very solid. They're waterproof, watertight, IP67. You clip them on there, if you crimp them right, you put them on together and they're there for a long time. So in this video, let me go inside and I'll show you the kit I have and how easy it is for me to put MC4 connectors on my solar panels. So all of them across my entire uh, system here will have the same connectors and it makes it easy to break away the panel from a current situation or configuration and service it or replace it without having to do soldering or heat shrinking or butt splices or something that's going to fail over time. So I'll show you a couple things around the table while it's quiet inside, hopefully. Uh, so I got 50 feet of red and black 10 gauge wire on Amazon. This is red, black, bonded 10 gauge, solid copper. The, some of the solar panels I've seen that I have, they're using either 12 gauge, it's labeled from the uh, junction on the back of the panel. Some are 10, I think the uh, new powers are 10 gauge. And this should be more than enough for uh, what I'm doing. So I got 50 feet here, uh, maybe not as long or not enough length, but definitely a good enough size, a gauge. Link is in the description. What these are, are I'm going to be getting more of these too. These are for joining multiple panels together in parallel. Okay. For instance, um, I'm going to take my 36 volt panels and run them in parallel. So that's going to keep it at 36 volts, but it's going to you know double my amperage, uh, you know, current on the panel. So basically. I take a positive from each panel, say up top, positive, positive, and it's gonna give me a positive out. And they also have these for uh, four way, you know, if you wanna go four in and one out. But I just got these to try out for the two 36 volt panels, uh, the two big ones I have, the 355 watts. So again, why would I not wanna use MC4 connectors? So we'll show you those after. Now this kit right here is a MC4 crimp uh, kit. It's on Amazon, link is there as well. Comes with the crimp tool, the flaring tools, and also this one came with six sets of MC4 connectors. So I have six sets, and I've already used a couple uh, playing around with it, but I also ordered 48 more sets for $20 on Amazon, and that link is in the description as well. So I use these to practice, and I'm gonna use one to show you here, but it's also got the tools here to ratchet, you know, the, the back compression end on, so I'll show you that. But So this kit's about 30, uh, another 48 sets of connectors, about 20. I think this was about 30 for the wire and these were about $7, I think. So this is very easy to do and I'm going to show you and all I'm gonna really have, I mean, you should have a wire stripper, but you know, I, I, I've seen videos online, they're very professional. You gotta have a, you know, a $80 snap on this, and a $40 cutter. No, you don't. We're gonna do this with a DeWalt knife, uh, strip it off real quick, one, two, three, and put the connectors on to show you how easy it is uh, it's actually a lot easier than some of the other connectors I've ever done, but this is the first time I've ever had to mess with MC4 connectors. So let me give it a shot here and show you out. All right, so I'll just use a piece of wire here as a demo and waste the connector because I got more, but uh, I, you know I only use this here for example. So these wire strippers suck to be honest with you, but here's how much I cut off just to make sure. And this is 10 gauge, so 
the closest to tendon I can see. So I'll just use this like this, okay? And these are dull, and I know that because it's pulling shards of cable or copper out. But like I said, this is solid copper. And I can tell you what, this is a lot uh, bigger. You know, it looks like the 12 gauge or the 10 gauge that's on some of those panels where they're measuring it by the outside, you know, uh, insulator. This is a lot thicker than the ones I was playing with today on some of the panels. So this is about how much I strip off okay how, how long is that well you take your connector okay and look at the piece you know you have so so this is a uh, male and a female okay and it's got the two inserts here all right one of the inserts is bigger smaller you know uh, male female goes together right the the bigger one is going to go on your positive or the male here, okay? This little one is gonna go on the female. So if you look at this, let's see if I hope I can get this on camera right. This is how much I'm stripping off. Enough to go in like this, okay? Can you see that? I'm gonna say that's about an inch, I guess. Just three quarters of an inch, right? And that should go in like this, right? That's how much you want. So strip those off, all right? And what you're gonna do is put this in to where the, the jacket is right there at the back of the little, you know, flared part here, right? And then you're gonna take your crimp tool and there's three different die, you know, three different dies here. Uh, we're gonna use the, the middle one just because that's what I ended up using, right? You put this right in, in the middle, like this, and you're just going to crimp it like that it is ratcheting so it's not going to let go once you crimp that until you get it all the way crimped okay so that's a start on how that's gonna look okay now what I do and if you wanted to solder now's the time to solder right here what I do is I take the pliers and I just fold over the little wings here very easy like that okay and I know this camera's probably not seeing it but that's how that should look now <clears throat> you want to make sure you pull on it's not going anywhere you take your this is going to be the male end so take your you know back end off here you got three pieces you got the back nut you got the compression part here those are going to go on the wire just one two okay and then you're going to push this part in to the connector until it kind of snaps in. it's going to click in let's see go all the way in <clears throat> you might not hear it snap in but you'll know when it's in because it won't pull out <clears throat> okay and you can see that the the pin is almost butted up to the end there okay now if you pull on it it shouldn't come off in fact I can yank the wire out before you get that pin out all right, and then you're gonna take your compression part of stress relief whatever you call it strain relief to the back, put the nut on, okay, and then you're going to take your two little tools here, which are kind of like torque wrenches um, for ratcheting this back piece on without over tightening because they are waterproof. So you put one end here, okay, it's got like the cut out there, one end here, get the other one around like this, now watch, right? It's going to snap when you're like pretty much at torque, okay? That is on, this MC4 is on right there, okay? Now the fem the uh, that's the male. Now the female is going to pretty much be the same thing. Okay, so you get that in. You see it's right up to where the wings are pretty much. I'm going to crimp like this. Okay, I'm going to take pliers, fold the little wings over like this, one, two, so they're rounded. If you have any little knurls sticking up, you can flatten those out too. And you're going to take the female one, again, back piece on like this, get this popped in, see it snapped in, okay, get the compression little strain relief on, 
Put that on. Tighten it as much as you can, finger tight. Get the tools on. One, two, three. And there you go. That is two solid MC4 connectors that are on there. And then now, when you put those together on, you know, panels, whatever, you'll see how they snap in really nice and tight. That's a really solid connection there. The only way those really come off, and you can see here, there's little little tabs on the side. Where's the there's little tabs right here on the side? You'd have to pretty much push them in and pull it out. Now you could use this tool to do that also. If you get this in here like this, okay, pull it right out. The tool's got the fingers in there. So once again, you put it in. Nice and tight, get the tool in there, that'll help you pull it out, okay? So you're pretty much gonna need that tool unless you wanna mar up those with a pair of pliers. So MC4 connectors, waterproof, uh, weatherproof for a long time, a very, uh, you know, standard in solar panels, okay? And uh, having the right tools to do those makes it a hell of a lot easier when you're trying to do, I mean, it's that fast. There's no butt splices, there's no soldering, there's no, you know, loose connections. When you do this right like this, uh, you could always put these together and then use an ohm meter. You know, you're not gonna have it together in just a piece like this. I'm just doing this as an example. You would put, uh, maybe test with your leads, you know, put an ohm meter on and make sure they're, they're uh, passing voltage or their continuity is there, okay? But uh, that's your MC4 connectors. Okay, well, that about wraps that up. And uh, I'm gonna finish with the rest of my panels, get those all, uh, you know, even, even the ones uh, JA Solar that I have, they have MC4, but they're older. Well, they're not older, they've just been out in the weather a little bit. So I'm gonna redo them all so I have the same new connectors on here. And if you want, you could actually use some dielectric grease, which I don't think you'll need, but dielectric grease is always a good thing in the contacts here. And, uh, you know, they'll really keep it weather tight for uh, many years of service. You don't want your connectors to fail prematurely before your panels fail. So. Thanks for watching, everybody. More videos on the way, and I got to get up on this roof soon and get these things mounted. In the meantime, trying to dodge the storms before I mount them all. And hello, kitty. Kitty wants to say goodbye. Huh, kitty?